despite the sustained popularity of former President Donald Trump, other potential 2024 Republican presidential contenders are heading to Iowa to kick off their unofficial campaigns. On Friday, former Vice President Mike Pence will be one of several GOP heavyweights to address evangelicals at the Family Leadership Summit in Des Moines. Even though Democrats have discussed changing the presidential primary calendar, the state is still expected to be Republicans' first challenge of 2024. For more, let's bring in Brianne Fonnensteel. She's the chief political reporter for the Des Moines Register. Hi there, Brianne. It's good to see you. So give us a preview of the big names at tomorrow's summit. And can you explain what role has this gathering actually played in past presidential campaigns? So this is a big summit hosted by a group called the Family Leader. It's a Christian conservative organization, so it tends to draw a wide range of Republicans, but especially those who have kind of an evangelical bench or those who have um, an appeal to kind of Iowa evangelical voters. And so this year we're seeing Vice President Mike Pence is kind of the headliner. He's the really big name, but um, it's also got former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem are going to be there as well. And so these are names that are all kind of in the mix as we start to look to 2024 already in a potential Republican primary. But as you mentioned, Donald Trump is the name that's really looming large over this. Um, Iowans, just like Republicans across the country, still very broadly um, are, are fans of the former president. They would like to see him run. Um, but these are names that they're excited to start seeing. They're, they're starting to to test the waters and to hear from some of these other potential contenders if the, the former president decides not to run again. And some of the headliners planning to speak were featured in a straw poll at last weekend's CPAC conference. Who did well and how should we read those results? Well, they did two rounds of polling here. The first round is with um, with President Donald Trump's name included. And when that happens, I think the big takeaway is that Donald Trump gets a lot and everybody else gets a little bit. And it's kind of spread out between everyone. Uh, Ron DeSantis is the name that people are most excited about behind Donald Trump. But but when, when he's included, everyone is very much kind of sprinkled in, in the 1% range, including those names that I mentioned that are going to be at the summit tomorrow in Iowa. But when you take President Trump out of the mix, again, Ron DeSantis is the, the person people are most excited about. But behind him, uh, Mike Pompeo gets 5%. Um, but the others, again, are sprinkled much, much lower. And so I think the big takeaway from this is that Republicans broadly are still really interested in former President Donald Trump, and they, they don't yet know a whole lot about some of these other contenders. They're really excited to hear about DeSantis. But as we've seen in past presidential cycles, the names that are really big really early on like this don't always stay really big. And you will see some of these other people start to bubble up. And so what you're, you're seeing Mike Pompeo do, what you're seeing um, Nikki Haley was here in the state the other week. What they're trying to do is really get their name ID up there. They're trying to get out. They're trying to talk to Iowa Republicans early and get them to start thinking about them as viable contenders, people that they want to hear from again. Of course, Mike Pence is, is well known in the state. He's campaigned here a lot on behalf of the president. And so he's well known. And so it'll be interesting to see the reception he gets tomorrow night at this event. It is very much his kind of crowd, this kind of Christian evangelical Iowa conservative. And so we'll see how he does, whether he's able to rally folks or whether somebody surprising is able to steal the spotlight. It would seem to be, a Brianna, an awkward position, though, because you have these Republicans um, out in Iowa who are going to be there. Obviously, any politician visiting Iowa and New Hampshire at this stage is going to face questions about presidential ambitions. But as you noted, the former president, uh, President Trump, still has not said whether he's running in 2024. So how are Republicans navigating that? It is a difficult situation for them to kind of think about because very, very much they still kind of uh, defer to the former president. Nikki Haley was was in the state and she's been on the record saying that if the former president runs, then then she's going to bow out. She doesn't want to compete against him. And so these candidates, potential candidates, they may they may not even actually run, are in the position of needing to put in 
put in the work now, kind of start laying that groundwork so that if, if the opportunity arises, they're in a good position. But many of them have said, we don't want to compete against the former president. We're allies of the former president. And so um, they're, they're treading very lightly. And, and frankly, if we, if we were to ask them tomorrow, which I'm sure many of us will, I don't think any of them would say we're here to run for president. You know, they, they play a little coy this early. They're kind of testing the waters on their own, testing their message, getting their name out there. But I don't think anyone would come to this date right now and very openly say, I'm here because I'm thinking about running for president. Yeah, I think that's that, that sounds right. Well, let's talk about 2022, because there are at least four seats held by Iowa Republicans from governor down to Congress. Do Democrats have a shot in Iowa? And will Republican Senator Chuck Grassley run for another term? That's a both of those are really great questions. Um, I, I think Democrats are really trying to find their way right now. It's an open question, and I think it's going to be difficult for them. Iowa has swung pretty far to the right in the last year, two years. 2020, um, what the state went to Donald Trump. The Republicans flipped to congressional seats, including in Iowa's uh, second district, which was the closest closest election in the country this year. It was decided by six votes in which a Republican ousted um, a Democrat in that race. And so Democrats are really looking to find their way right now, and they're trying to field some good candidates, but I think it's going to be a struggle. And I think many of them are concerned about fundraising. Many of those races that they lost last time around were very well funded, and they still were unable to pull it out. So I think there are a lot of concerns. They're trying to get in some good candidates right now. I don't think anyone would tell you that their hopes are completely dashed, um, but it's certainly an uphill struggle. And as you mentioned, Chuck Grassley, who's our senior senator, um, is thinking about running for another term. And Chuck Grassley has been in office since 1959 in Iowa. He's very well known and would be an incredibly formidable challenger to anyone who runs against him. And so I think a lot of Democrats, a lot of Republicans, frankly, are waiting to see what Chuck Grassley does, because that sets a stage for a lot of these other races. If he runs, that Senate seat becomes very, very difficult for Democrats to win. But if it's open, if there's an open Republican primary, it creates more of an opening for Democrats to kind of come in and maybe create create something there. So much to watch in your state. Brianne Fonnensteel. Brianne, good to have you. Thank you. Thank you.